So, hello all my dear students. Here we are going to be start the series of the quick review for the E chapter in Biology SSC. So, first of all students, I warm up here to all of you with a quote that success has no secrets. You must make a systematic study so you can get the success. No secrets, no shortcuts, nothing. Believe it. You must go with the constant and the uh, systematic studies to get the good grades. Okay, now you can get the A1, A2 definitely compulsory. Why? Because I know that my students have done very much of the hard work and if you continue that or you are hard work constantly up to the examination level then definitely you can able to catch it so now let's enter into the first chapter that you are aware of it that is the nutrition here i'm not going to take you into the depth of the chapter i'm just going to be saying the few of the basic important terms or the few of the highlights of the chapter that you can quick get the review for it and you can revise it for the for the examination now you need to be read the grandest as well so let's have an autotrophic nutrition okay the nutrition itself is nothing but the internal intake of the nutrients and the assimilation of it or the procurement of the nutrients is called to be as the nutrition the nutrition is divided into the two types the first one is the autotrophic nutrition and the second one is the heterotrophic nutrition Autotrophic nutrition included two more types that is the chemoautotrophic nutrition and the photoautotrophic nutrition. Chemoautotrophic nutrition where the organisms can capable to take the energy from certain chemicals and make their own food. That is the chemoautotrophs. Next is the photoautotrophic nutrition where the organism can able to intake the energy from the photons of the light. That is nothing but the solar energy. They grab the solar energy and they can capable to make their own food that is known to be as the photo autotrophic nutrition. Mostly done by the, as we aware of it, the process of photosynthesis which done by the plants and some of the algae as well. And few of the protistas also go through this kind of denutrition. Now let's discuss regarding to the photosynthesis. Why does this take place? Mostly the photosynthesis takes place within the green parts of the plant body. What are those green parts of the plant body? Nothing but the leaves. In the leaves, what is that specific place that this photosynthesis process takes place? That is the chloroplast. The chloroplast is the specific cell organelle where the photosynthesis takes place. Why? Because it contains a magical pigment which is green in color that is the chlorophyll. This chlorophyll is a bit or uh, what we have to say that a chlorophyll is a kind of a pigment which can capable to capture the sunlight and can utilize that light to uh, break down the water molecule then the OH and uh, OH minus and uh, H plus ions which get released they go for the further reactions and can able to make the chloroplast uh, can able to make the carbohydrates within the leaf and that is nothing but the food. So here, the main thing you need to be learn the structure of the chloroplast in this chapter and you must have to be aware, comes to know what is the light reaction and what is the dark reaction. So here, from this light reaction, dark reaction much more important. Why? Because the light reaction and dark reaction, uh, one more question is asked usually, what is the photolysis? What is the breakdown of the water molecule? And what is the Hill's reaction? That is also nothing but the H2O give rise to H plus and OH minus ions. And what is the light harvesting pigment? Here the light harvesting pigment is nothing but the chlorophyll. And the next is the one more question which usually ask here, what are the assimilatory products? At the end of the light reactions, uh, the NADPH and the ATP formed, which is known to be as the assimilatory powers uh, during this reaction. So, the differentiation in between the light reaction and the dark reaction also will ask, and like this, one more question asks. One, another one more question from here that what are the intermediary components formed during the dark reaction? That is also asked. So here, light and dark reaction very, very important. And when we enter into the heterotrophic nutrition, called also a parasitic and the saprophytic nutrition, you have to be learned about it. Now the next thing is the digestive system. Here you need to be aware of it that all parts and what are the enzymes are going to be released here. It is very, very important. Holozoic means the digestion takes place inside the body. Parasitic 
it means the organisms intake their food from the other organisms and the saprophytic means the digestion takes place outside the organism's body. Now here we can say the digestive system. In this digestive system, we are aware of it that it starts from the buccal cavity, larynx, pharynx, the esophagus, the stomach, then it has the two main glands, that is the liver and the pancreas, that plays a major role in the digestion of the food. Now the next is the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine and the small intestine and the large intestine. So here we need to be aware of the basically the enzymes which release here and where is the carbohydrates being digested, where is the proteins get digested and where is the fats are going to be digested. So the digestion of the carbohydrates starts from the buccal cavity itself and the digestion of the proteins starts within the stomach and the digestion, the complete site for the digestion is the small intestine. So here in a buccal cavity saliva release that contains an enzyme amylase in the stomach gastric juice release that contains an enzyme pepsin and the liver release the bile juice and the pancreas release the three kinds of the enzymes that is the amylase, lipase and the trips, the trypsin which respectively are uh, active or they take action over the carbohydrates, fats and the proteins and the next complete digestion takes place within a small intestine. So uh, we need to be aware of that what is the role of each enzyme, where, does, where they are going to be released, upon which they are going to be act and what is their function. Basically here the saliva uh, regarding to the which enzyme present in saliva and what happens to the carbohydrates within the buccal cavity this question most of the time asks. And another thing regarding to liver. The liver is one of the gland which release the bile juice uh, which get stored within the gallbladder and get released within the duodenum and there it act over the fats. So these fats are going to be break down. So this is known to be as the emulsification of fats, emulsification of fats. It is not only occur due to the bile juice but also lipase which get released by the pancreas. Emulsification of fats is one of the very important questions that usually ask in a one mark and as well as in a two mark question. Now the next thing important is here the enzyme, the, the digestive juice which not contain any enzyme. So here the liver which release the bile juice, it not contain any kind of the enzyme like the saliva, gastric juice and the intestinal juices and pancreatic juices contains the enzyme within it. So we need to be aware of this thing also. Now the next thing here, very important, that uh, what are the steps involved in the holozoic nutrition or the digestion? That is the uh, intaking of the food, digestion of the food, uh, assimilation of the food and the irritation of the food. Whenever it is asked in the four mark question, then you have to be write these four steps to complete your answer. Now the next uh, very important thing that these activities uh, from the autotrophic nutrition concept of this chapter. From these activities, I am sure that might be anyone will ask in the examination or if it is not asked the direct activity, then any one question definitely will ask from this concept. So you sh sure that you have to learn all these four activities. The first one is the presence of the starch and the second one is the most half-life reaction or the experiment. Third one is the hydrilla experiment and the fourth one is the black pepper experiment. For the two of the experiments that is the black pepper experiment and the moles half leaf experiment we need to discharge the plant body. It is also frequently asking question that before going to be performed the black pepper experiment or the moles half leaf experiments why we need to discharge the plant body and what does it mean. It means that we have to take a potted plant and we have to keep it in a dark for the four to uh, three to five days so that it can the complete starch which is present within the plant body can be utilized and the plant remains as no starch within it so we can get the uh, accurate results for our activity. So like this you just go through these concepts and go with the vitamins as well and uh, there are two types of the vitamins water soluble and the fat soluble that is very much important. So here it was the just quick review for the first chapter. I hope so that you can able to understand and you can able to learn. So we turn here the first chapter. The chemists don't forget that water soluble is the B complex and the C and the fat soluble are the A, D, E and K. So learn that what are the diseases caused because of it. Learn that uh, where it is available, which food components uh, contain
vitamins these vitamins make sure to learn everything uh, including the malnutrition as well so this is regarding to our chapter quick review i hope so that you all understood and i hope so that you will revise it continuously So hello all my dear students. So as you know that we have started the quick review for the every chapter. We have completed for the first chapter. Now we are going to be take the quick review within the second chapter. That is nothing but the respiration energy releasing system. This is the biology SSC examination point of view. We are taking the quick review concepts, the important concepts in our videos. So here let's have what is the important things in this chapter as you already aware of it. The first thing we must uh, give a sight over the discovery of the gases, the work done by the Lavoisier and the Priestleys and there we need to be aware of the what is chalky acid, what is vitiated air, what is respirable air and what happens when the combustion of the phosphorus done and what happens when the combustion of the uh, charcoal have done and what does mean by the chalky acid that's nothing but the carbon dioxide vitiated air the air in which the respirable air is absent and what is the fixed air very important thing that is nothing but the carbon dioxide why because many of the time these questions may ask in a one mark question so we need to be aware of this discovery of the gases the work comprehensive work done by the Lavoisier and the Priestley now the next thing is steps all the events involved in respiration it is a bit important thing here the steps or the events which are involved those are five steps you need to be aware of it the first thing is breathing second thing is the gases exchange in lungs and the third thing is the gases gas transport by blood and the fourth thing is gases exchange in tissue level and the fifth thing is cellular respiration so let's have a discussion over the first breathing so breathing is nothing but the inhalation and the exhalation of the gases that is we inhale the oxygen and we exhale the carbon dioxide and you need to be aware of that how percentage of these gases how much percent of the carbon dioxide present while inhaling and how much percent of the oxygen present when we are exhaling out so the percentage also you need to be aware of it. It's the 0.04 for the carbon dioxide when we inhale and when we exhale the 4% of the carbon dioxide is present and when we inhale 21% of the oxygen is present and when we exhale 16% of the oxygen is present. Next thing is the this breathing you have a first activity that's when we blow the air within a lime water then the lime water turns into the milky white. Why? Why? Because we exhale out the carbon dioxide gas. Now the next thing is in the breathing itself the complete pathway of the breathing the pathway of the breathing includes the epiglottics from the nostrils the air enters into it then from the nasal cavity and from nasal cavity to it enters into the pharynx larynx then it enters into the trachea then it enters into the bronchi and from the bronchi it enters into the bronchioles and from the bronchioles it get diffuses into the blood the bronchioles are end with the very very tiny balloon like air sacs from those air sacs the blood is going to be uh, diffuses carbon dioxide into alveolus and oxygen from alveolus to the blood okay so that is, that is the pathway of the air so make sure that you must have the different concept regarding to the events in the respiration and the pathway of the air okay there is a different thing and another important thing in the breathing is that the function of the epiglottics the function of the epiglottics, the epiglottics which is present in the larynx region, it is a larynx region. So here the epiglottics is present as you see. So this epiglottics is normally function as a valve for the foot pipe and the air pipe. When we are swallowing the food, it covers the trachea. As you see here, this is the epiglottics, larynx, pharynx, trachea and these are the bronchies and these are the bronchioles and at the end of the bronchioles, the blood capillaries are present and these alveolus are present. Alveolus are very very tiny air sacs, balloon like and they are made up of single cell thick wall. So on the same way, blood capillaries also made up of single cell thick wall so that they can able to diffuse as gases 
diffuses into each other. So simply as we know that the oxygen from the alveolus diffuses into the blood capillaries and from blood capillaries carbon dioxide diffuses into the alveoli. So here you can see the structure of one alveoli ball that this is the alveolus and this is the blood capillaries which is around it. Okay. So this is regarding to the pathway of the respiration and function of the epiglottics. Now the very important thing within a breathing is that the inspiration and the expiration. Inspiration, expiration, very important thing from this chapter. You need to be aware of that, how we inhale the mechanism involved in during inhalation and exhalation. We need to be aware of that the lungs are spongy in nature and very, very delicate organs. They are unable to intake the air within them, the air itself cannot be go into the lungs and cannot come out. For that, the two things are involved. One is the diaphragm and another one is the ribcage muscles. So you need to be aware of that what is the function of the diaphragm. Now the next thing is here, uh, usually many of the students ask me uh, what to say the uh, function of the diaphragm here. So diaphragm is a floor for the thoracic cavity. It is function like a floor. Usually it is uh, present as a dome shaped. Okay, whenever we inhale, then this diaphragm muscles contract and they become flattened. So when they become flattened, then what happens? The air rushes inside the thoracic cavity due to the less air pressure. Then on the same way during the exhalation, what happens? The diaphragm muscles get relaxed and it comes into its original shape that is the dome shape. So that what happens? Get the uh, air pressure within the thoracic cavity get increases so the air rushes outside now the next important thing here the gases exchange in the lungs level we discussed regarding to the alveolus and the next thing is gases transportation by blood the blood is one of the uh, main transport system uh, which supply nutrients which supply oxygen and it takes back the carbon dioxide to the lungs as well now the next thing is the gases exchange in the inter in the tissue levels so what happens uh, usually the concentration uh, in the tissue level uh, oxygen concentration is lesser than compared to the carbon dioxide so that the hemoglobin which combine with the oxygen in the lungs and forms the oxyhemoglobin in the tissue region it breaks down and it release the oxygen and the tissues get that oxygen and give back the carbon dioxide so like that the carbon dioxide come back to the lungs and some of the ways it get eliminated in the form of the carbonates as well now the next important thing in this chapter that is the cellular respiration cellular respiration means when the respiration takes place inside the cell all kinds of the living uh, organisms all kinds of prokaryotic eukaryotic cells perform the cellular respiration it is of two types aerobic and anaerobic aerobic means it takes place within the presence of oxygen anaerobic means it takes place in the absence of the oxygen here you can see that the what are the steps involved in the cellular respiration? The first gluco glucose molecule went down into the pyruvate acid. It is known to be as the three carbon molecule. It is uh, specially takes place within the cytoplasm, in eukaryotic cells, and as well as in the prokaryotic cells. But in the case of the eukaryotic cells, the next series of the reactions will take place in the mitochondria. But in the prokaryotic cells, due to the lack of the cell organelles, it is takes place within the cytoplasm itself. Now here we have the two steps that says uh, about the aerobic and the anaerobic respiration. Here we have taken the first the absence of or lower amount of oxygen. First we will take the example the partially presence or inadequate quantity of the oxygen. This is takes place within the bacteria and some of the times it is takes place within the muscles of the human being so that you are aware of that when we do the biggest exercise we need the more amount of the oxygen in the inadequate quantity of the oxygen the glucose molecule incompletely break down and release the lactic acid that causes the sudden cramps in our muscles so do you feel pain in the muscles after the exercise now the next thing the complete absence of oxygen in the yeast cells they form, uh, they form the ethanol and release the carbon dioxide release the energy and this ethanol is nothing but the kind of alcohol and for the formation of the fermentation and as well as making the alcohols this kind of the uh, this kind sir, of the respiration is going to be uh, takes place now the next thing is the presence of oxygen it is known to be as the aerobic respiration that usually takes place within the all kinds of the eukaryotic cells 
So presence of oxygen, what happens here? The glucose molecule completely break down and release the carbon dioxide water and the higher amount of the energy. And here the energy release in the form of ATP. And this ATP is known to be as the adenosine triphosphate. It is the triple phosphate bond. When it is get break down, then it releases the energy. And it contains the 7200 of the calories of energy. So this is the very important concept of the chapter. Many times this cellular respiration asked in the examination. So you need to be aware of everything about it. Okay, now every cell need to perform the respiration. So now the next thing is just a high, uh, once you go through these activities, uh, the carbon dioxide and heat evolve during the anaerobic respiration. And the next thing, carbon dioxide is evolved during the respiration. And the next thing, sugar activity. The sugar activity explain us the differences in between the combustion and the respiration. So the activities are very important. So this was the quick review in our second chapter. So I hope so that you understood. Go through this. So we have done this chapter now. Yes, hello my dear students, as you know that we are in the quick review of the E chapter. Now we have a chapter that is the transportation. As you know, this is the third chapter in the SSC biology. So the transportation is nothing but the circulatory system. The circulatory systems involve the blood and the heart and the blood vessels. So the fluid tissue which is runs within our blood vessels, that is nothing but the blood, it transport everything. It transport the oxygen, it transport the nutrients and as well as it transport the excretory components up to the kidneys and it bring back the filtered blood to the lungs as well. So the transportation is necessary that is done by the blood itself. So first thing in the very important that you need to be aware of the pulse rate right, that we get the sound here that is same like the heartbeat there is nothing but the pulse rate so make sure that you make the histogram for the pulse rate and the heartbeat and write the definition of it and the next thing is uh, you, we have to be learn clearly about the internal structure of heart. So this is one of the very very important thing from there the many of the questions can able to make that will ask within the examination. And the next important thing is the blood vessels and the circulation and the work done by these three scientists. Now the next thing is arteries and the veins and the next thing is cardiac cycle. As you see I have written here single and double circulation that is one of the simplest concepts but you have the doubts as well. Next is the edema, the lymphatic system. It is also quite easy but you have to be learn it regarding to the examination part of you. Next is the coagulation of the blood here. I'll explain it how this happens. Next thing is the root pressure. How does the circulation takes place within the plants? Why? Because the plants also living organisms, they take the water, they absorb the water due the uh, help of the root hairs from the soil and they transport it to the tip of the last leaf of the plant body and whatever the food is going to be produced within the leaves it must be get transported to the all parts of the body so here is a need that we need to be understand about it here the next thing uh, internal structure of the heart so let's have a structure of the heart so here you can see that the heart having the four chambers up, uh, upper chambers are the receiving chambers lower chambers are the pumping chambers and understand and remember always that the right side of the heart is responsible for the deoxygenated blood and the left side is responsible for the oxygenated blood and understand and remember that the six blood vessels arises from the heart the biggest one is a water and the second largest one is the uh, pulmonary artery okay so water is one of the biggest blood vessel which is arises from the left atrium the water arises from the left atrium and it supplies the blood to the all parts of the body next second thing is the uh, second largest blood vessel that is the pulmonary artery which is arises from the right ventricle and it supplies the blood to the uh, lungs where it going to be convert into oxygenated. Next you see this one is the superior vena cavae and this one is the inferior vena cavae. Inferior vena cavae collects the bloods from lower parts of the body that is deoxygenated in nature. On the same way the superior vena cava collects the blood that is deoxygenated in nature and they both enters into the right atrium. From the right atrium, this deoxygenated blood enters into the right ventricle. And from this right ventricle, it enters into the 
pulmonary artery and from pulmonary artery it goes into the lungs there it get purified and come back by the help of the two blood vessels that is the pulmonary veins this pulmonary veins brings back the blood to the heart that is oxygenated to the left atrium from the left atrium the blood enters into the left ventricle and from the left ventricle it get pumped into the aorta again and aorta supply the blood to the all parts of the body so this is about the structure the internal structure of the heart and another way the important things in the heart is the presence of the valve this you can see that the right side is the tricuspid valve present and the left side is the bicuspid valve present and not only this within the pulmonary vein there is lunar valve that is the uh, pulmonary valve present and within a water systematic valve are present and this valve plays an important role uh, for forming the heart beat and as well as for pumping the blood in their respective way now the next thing is what kind of the questions will ask from the internal structure of the heart uh, mainly the biggest blood vessel will ask and the next thing is what are the lower chambers what is the function of it the next thing is what is the uh, septum uh, which is present in between the ventricle and auricles what is the uh, septum which is present in between the auricle and auricle so what is that fluid that protects the heart from the shocks and jerks and what is that membrane which covers the heart so this kinds of the questions will ask you need to be aware of it next thing is the blood vessels and the circulation the you can see here fabrice studied the valve within the veins and the william harvey studied the valve within the heart and the marcellus morphogy studied the blood capillaries within the wings of the bat so this studies explain us about the complete circulation within the body that you listen with once that from all parts of the body the oxygenated blood get collected from the, by the help of the inferior and superior vena cava it enter into the into the heart then uh, it go into the lungs and from lungs it come back to the heart and it get supplies to the all parts of the body in the tissue level uh, the artery and veins get divided redivide arteries divide divide and form the arterioles and arteries convert into the very small single cell thick blood capillaries that is said to be as the uh, blood capillaries where the diffusion of the nutrients occur then it uh, uh, continue into the venules okay now so differences in between the arteries and veins also learn arteries are always supply the oxygenated blood and the veins always collect the deoxygenated blood except the pulmonary artery which contains the uh deoxygenated blood in the pulmonary veins which contains the oxygenated blood now the next thing is cardiac cycle the cardiac cycle have the five steps that you need to be learn from the textbook itself due to the lack of time i can't say uh, there you can learn that how does the heart beat occurs then afterwards you need to be learn about the systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure that is the contraction space of the ventricles is nothing but the systolic and the uh, relaxation space of the ventricles is nothing but the diastolic and its time interval also you want to see that next i think is the single and double circulation so it's the most of the common question that all the time ask and you have a dot also for all the time single circulation means to complete one circulation within a body the blood go or flows from the heart one time that is the single circulation and double circulation means to complete the com one circulation once again to complete the one circulation within a body the blood enters into the heart or pass from the heart two times and it is generally happens when the heart having the four chambers is not occur in a heart which have the two chambers so you have to be make sure that to learn about it and beside of it there is the open and the closed circulation also that you have to be learn about it that is the circulation which is present within the annelidas arthropodas uh, and molluscs you need to be aware of it arthropoda and mollusca having the open type of the circulation and annelida and human beings having the closed type of the circulation next thing is the edema so as we know that we when we sit for a long time the uh, excessive tissue fluid get accumulate within the muscles and that cause the swelling so we unable to walk properly or we get some pain so that is due to the 
non movement of the tissue fluid that condition is known to be as the edema and the lymphatic system you need to be learn that five few points are there the next thing is the calculation of the blood very important uh, here i return the steps it is mainly occurs due to the presence of the platelets the platelets release an enzyme that is known to be as the thrombokinase so this thrombokinase acts over the prothrombin and convert it into the thrombin then again this thrombin acts over the fibrins and convert them fibrinogens that is uh, an undissolved fibrinogens that not allow any blood cells to flow okay so this is the blood coagulation many of the times it asks that when you get injury then if five to six minutes your blood start to coagulate it not flow again so what's the reason behind it so the blood coagulation is one of the very important thing now the next thing is the plants in plants how does the circulation takes place as we know about the xylem and phloem the both uh, conduction tissue which plays important role for the transportation of water and the transportation of the food as well here you need to be aware of the root pressure and its diagram as well and you need to be aware of the difference in between the transportation and the transpiration transportation means the water is going to be transport and transpiration means loss of water from the stomata or the aerial parts of the plant body is known to be as the transpiration. So here we have the third chapter. We are going to be one little bit. You, I hope so that you have understood very well and have any doubts then you can clarify next time. Hello students, as you know that we are taking the quick review for the every chapter as per the SSA examination point of view. So here we have the fourth chapter that is nothing but the excretion, very simple chapter. So excretion is nothing but the waste disposing system or the waste generating system. So as we know that the every organism's body go with the balancing of the ion salts and water and go with the metabolic activities anabolism and the catabolism during this what happened many of the wastes get generated within the human body and as well as other organisms body here usually we will talk about the human excretion and the simple thing we will talk about the plants excretion also then we will take about the alkaloids primary and secondary metabolites now here in this way, first we need to be aware of the life processes and their products. As we know that during the digestion, amino acids, glucose and the many other things are going to be um, uh, prepared or absorbed into the body. And during the photosynthesis, oxygen is going to be liberated out and the starch or the carbohydrates are going to be prepared. So on the same way, when the anabolic catabolic activities go on, the nitrogenous byproducts and many other components which are waste and fatal to our body need to be excreted out. So for that purpose, we have the complete excretory system. The excretory system includes the a pair of kidney, a pair of ureters, a urinary bladder, etc. and the renal and the renal artery and the renal vein. Next thing is internal structure of the kidney. The internal structure of the kidney uh, really very important. We need to be aware of that. Uh, the right side kidney, left side kidney, why there is a difference in their sizes. Usually the right side kidney is slightly smaller than the left one. It is a one of the one mark question that usually asked in the examination. That is due to the presence of the liver. The right side kidney provides the space for the liver. So that's why it is slightly smaller in size. Now next thing is the kidneys are located in a lower abdominal cavity. As you see here, we have a two pairs of the kidneys. And you see here, the, this column is known to be as the medulla. And the, this column is the cortex. Medulla is the inner pair in color. And outer side that is dark in color, that is the cortex. And this region is the pelvis, where the all collecting tubes open. And uh, this one, the pyramid-like structures, which has the 1.8 millions of the uh, tube, tubes, uh, these are the renal tubules, millions, 1.8 millions of the renal tubules are present, which are present within the calcis and responsible for the complete filtration of the blood, so that they are known to be as the structural and the functional unit of the kidney. So here you can see the structure of the nephron, which is known to be as the functional unit of the kidney, it has the two 
parts. The first thing is the malfunction body and the next thing is the renal tubules. Malfunction body included Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus. Glomerulus forms due to the presence of the bunch of capillaries within it and this glomerulus main part for the first filtration. After the filtration here, the, the filtered blood is known to be as the primary urine. And this Bowman's capsule have the epithelial cells which is uh, made up of squamous epithelial cells and which are known to be as the podocytes. These podocytes allow the filtered blood to enter into the first part of the renal tubules that is known to be as the PCT proximal convoluted tubule. So PCT is the region where the second step in the mechanism of urine formation takes place that is the tubular reabsorption. So here in the tubular reabsorption what happened the all essential components which get filtered out in the primary urine that is the vitamins, vitamin C, certain hormones, water, 75% of the water usually get reabsorbed into the blood due to the presence of this all capillaries present around the PCT, loop of Henry and as well as BCT. So second thing is here the U-shaped tube you see here which is known to be as the loop of Henry where the 10% of the water get absorbed. And the third thing is the DCT which is known to be as the distal convoluted tubule where the tubular secretion occur. So this is the second phase of the filtration here it is assured or confirmed that all the base stage is going to be filtered out from the blood. So all the uh, like uh, the potassium ions, hydrogen ions, sodium ions and mainly the uh, hormones and the excessive water, this all are going to be secreted again within the DCT region. Then afterwards the, the urine enters into the collecting tube where the vasopressin hormone and makes the hypertonic urine. In the case that the vasopressin hormone not released, then that condition causes the uh, excessive urination that is known to be as the diabetes insipidus. So this condition is due to the not releasing well of this vasopressin hormone causes the diabetes insipidus excessive urination. So you need to be aware of the differentiation in between the diabetes stimulus and the diabetes mellitus. Uh, insipidus. Why? Because that diabetes mellitus is related to the pancreas and insulin and diabetes insipidus is related to the kidney and the vasopressin hormone. So make sure that when you are going to be learned then everything clearly learned. Why? Because uh, this mechanism of urine formation one of the very very important concept. Any kind of the question we ask uh, either it may ask the structure of the nephron or it may ask the function of the PCT, DCT or it may ask the function of the collecting tube or it may ask that why so that this renal tubule called to be as the structural and the functional unit of the kidney. Now the next thing is as I mentioned earlier that about the kidneys okay it has the three main parts that is the outermost dark is the cortex innermost to pale is the medulla and very innermost where the pyramid like structures presents it contains the 1.8 millions of the nephron within it that is the calcis then after that pelvis so you need to be aware of this all regions which is present within a kidney then you need to be learn that uh, what is the functioning how does the urine flow in, within the ureter and within the urinary bladder and how, how much amount of the urine can be stored within it that is the 300 to 500 grams and if it is increased 8 to 800 uh, then uh, ml then it's going to be painful like that and uh, the peristaltic movement occur for the flow of the urine from the kidneys to the bladder so you need to be aware of these all things and maturation as well one of the important concepts you go through from the textbook and learn and the next thing here is about the dialysis dialysis is also one of the very important concept here that is known to be as the artificial kidney the blood take out from the renal artery the blood take out from the main artery and get filtered in the dialyzing machine and again it is sent back to the body so the complete process is really important go through it once now the next thing is what is this esrd and uranium esrd you need to be aware of it end stage renal diseases when the fatal component like the nitrogenous waste products get accumulated within the body then it may swells up the body and may start to 
damaged body that condition is the esrd where the both the kidneys are failed to filter the blood next thing is the accessory organs as you know that the accessory organs are lungs liver and skin and large intestine the lungs are the uh, remove out the carbon dioxide liver remove out the bleeding bleeding and the ure uh, urochrome uh, why because the liver is the graveyard for the dead rbcs where the hemoglobin break down into the bleeding and the bleeding which is known to be as the bile pigments next is the skin eliminate the sebum sweat oil etc and it has a sebum glands and the sweat glands eliminate the many of the components and the next is the large intestine which eliminates the excessive amount of the water and amino acids mainly calcium etc now the next thing about this chapter is the excretion in plants excretion in plants also occurs that is in the form of the yearly dropping of the leaves and the dropping of the bark of the tree and as well as a storage of the waste stage within the fruits which is known to be as the raffles and the next important thing that we need to be aware of it here the primary metabolites and the secondary metabolites primary metabolites are essential for the growth and development whereas secondary metabolic not essential for the growth and development the secret head within the plant body which are alkaloids tannins gums and lactic so make sure that you learn about it which are nitrogenous by products carbon by products and car uh, gums and lactic which make the chewing gums alkaloids mainly we utilize for our medicinal use antiseptics and the antibiotics and the caffeine uh, for the stimulating the nervous system like that so here the quick review for the excretion excretory system or the excretion chapter we have learned one of the excretion was a secretion the left over so you go through that i hope so that you have learned this chapter and you got it that important concepts revise once again it's quite easy i hope you can learn